OK, so in this video, uh, we're going to look at finding magnitude and bearing of the resultant force. We have this particle in the center here that's being pulled by these three forces. And we want to figure out in which direction it's going to end up going, really. OK, so the magnitude of the force uh, that is pulling it in that direction and the bearing of the direction itself. So what we're going to do is we are going to write all of these forces down um, and we're going to break this one up into its component parts. So if I complete the right angle triangle there, okay, then I could write down that the opposite side of that right angle triangle will be 8 sine 25 because it's the opposite side and we're using Sokotoa there, so 8 sine 25. And we've got the adjacent side, so that's cosine, so 8 cosine 25. OK, so we now have the horizontal and vertical components of that force. So what I can then do is I can write all of these forces down. OK, so the force itself, let's say, call it F. Well, we've got the components of this force. So if I write them down, well, let's do it all as horizontal and vertical. That would probably be easier. So if I take to the right as positive, we have 8 cos 25. So 8 cos 25, 8 cos 25. And we've got 9 newtons working to the left, and so that would be negative 9. And that is what's going on for the horizontal for this force. The vertical, if I take up as positive, so I've got the 8 sine 25 working upwards, and I've got the 6 newtons working downwards. OK, and so this is my force. 8 cosine 25 take away 9 i plus 8 sine 25 take away 6 j. OK, so what I need to do is to find the magnitude and the bearing of this force. OK. So, in order to find the magnitude, I'm going to have to use uh, Pythagoras. And so the length of this force is 8 cosine 25 take away 9 squared plus 8 sine 25 take away 6 squared square rooted. Okay, so this is a calculator job, obviously. So we have the 8 cosine 25 take away 9 squared plus the 8 sine 25 take away 6 squared, all square rooted. And we get 3.15 uh, newtons to three significant figures. OK, so that is the magnitude of the resultant force. We now need to find the bearing, OK? So when you find the bearing and when you're working uh, with it in this form, OK, it's a very good idea to quickly work out what those individual component values are on your calculator to check whether they're positive or negative, because it's not clear as to whether these are positive or negative. OK, so if I do that, we've got 8 cos 25 take away 9, ah, which is actually minus 1.749. OK, so F is actually minus 1.749, etc. I and the 8 sine 25 take away 6 is minus 2.619 J. OK, so that's actually uh, what F is looking like. So we've got a force that's going to the left and down. So it's actually, if I draw in a north, OK, well, the particle's actually being pulled in this direction. OK, now, well, actually, it might be easier if I draw the triangle this way, won't it? So I need to find this angle, and then I can add it to 180 to get the bearing. So 
what have we got? Well, this is your 1.749, okay, which is the length of that. Now, 8 cosine 25 take away 9 is negative. So the positive version is multiplying that by minus 1, which will get you 9 minus 8 cosine 25. It's got the same, same effect as just swapping the terms. And likewise, the 8 sine 25 take away 6, multiplying that by minus 1, we get the 6 minus 8 sine 25. OK? So I can then use tan of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so if I work that out, we've got 9 minus 8 cosine 25 divided by 6 take away 8 sine 25, and we get 0 0.668 inverse tan of that, and I get 33.743, etc. degrees. So that's that angle there. So the bearing. Add on the 180. Remember, bearing's a three figure, so we're looking at 214 degrees to the nearest degree. Okay, so we've got the magnitude of the resultant force is 3.15 newtons, and the bearing is 214 degrees.